Okay, everybody, we are here. It is Lightbox. Everybody's excited about this amazing event. Truly one of my favorite conferences out there, and I'm sure you feel the same way. Uh, thanks for being here. I'm Kyle Webster uh, from Adobe. And today we have a really special show for you today on Illustration Masterclass. We're going to be talking about two fantastic features that are coming to the beloved Adobe Fresco that people have been asking for for a long time. Uh, as you know, we like to design the app around whatever it is people ask for. And so here you go. We've got two big ones for you today. Previewing today uh, perspective drawing. Okay. Mm -hmm. And when I say perspective drawing, I mean guided perspective drawing. So that means we're going to give you a little assist, if you like, with your perspective drawing, which of course saves everybody a bundle of time. So that's a really nice feature we're going to look at. Uh, the second thing we're going to be looking at is motion in Fresco. And uh, you may be wondering why I say motion and not animation. Well, it's because it's more complex than simply animation. You'll see what I mean when I reveal what it is that we're working on here for that. Now, both of these features are going to be coming your way for Adobe Max, which is in about a month and a week or two, something like that, about five or six weeks. Um, so be on the lookout for that because that is also a free online virtual event. It's a masterpiece of creative, uh, inspirational content um, programming, if you like. If you were lucky enough to catch Max last year, which is also free and totally online, then you know what I'm talking about. Uh, we pull out all the stops, we bring in all kinds of special guests to um, get those fires burning for you all uh, in terms of um, getting your creative fires burning and getting you ready to just get out there and make something amazing. So hope you'll join us for that. Um, but that's not the conference we're talking about today. Today is Lightbox. Those of you who are all excited about illustration for video games and film and comics and uh, everything under the sun, um, you've come to the right place. Uh, when I went to Lightbox in person, the first one two years ago, holy cow, so inspiring. I met some of my heroes out there. Really great to, to see those folks. Um, and uh, just look at some really incredible work. All right. So I know we don't want to waste too much time because we want to get to the good stuff. So we're going to jo jump over to my uh, iPad here. And we're going to take a look at, uh, oh, sorry about that. I got the wrong thing there. There we go. It's my iPad. I'm um, recording this from QuickTime, and uh, those of you who've ever done this before know that when you're trying to use QuickTime with your iPad, sometimes it'll drop off, so do forgive me if we're in the middle of the show and suddenly oh, everything disappears. Uh, you don't have to worry about that, okay? We're going to get it right back. Um, okay, now you look here and you'll see, hey Kyle, it looks like a drawing you did in perspective, and uh, yes, that's exactly what happened. And I want to break down for you how this uh, came about and how I use these lovely perspective guides and so on to uh, make that work. Um, before I do, I want to say a quick hello to some folks. I see that we have some nice folks here joining us from all over the place. Uh, we've got Wade and Kelly and Bliss and Moda Void and Benoit and Annika. And I see Laura is here as well. What's up, Christelle? Nice to see you. Uh, Biola and Becca. Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining us. More folks are trickling in. If you're watching on YouTube, I'm not reading the chat over there, so please... Um, if you want to ask me a question, head over to Behance, uh, that's be.net slash live or behance.net slash live. I'm checking out the chat over there. Um, Fabio is joining us as well. What's up, Fabio? So nice to see all these fine folks. Um, all right, let's get cracking. So uh, those of you who are paying attention to what's going on in Fresco, know about the pre-release program and these kinds of things, or maybe have been watching some videos in the last month or so, have seen a special panel over on the top right. So we have our layers here, we've got my layer properties, and just underneath that, look at this new panel, we have precision, okay? With the precision panel, you have the ability to change how snapping happens with your document. And um, I think this has already been covered before, but basically that means uh, rotation snapping, which is something you can put into place for when you rotate an object, when will it snap to a certain uh, angle. So we have options for 30 degree increments, 45 degree increments, and 90 degree increments, okay? Um, but check this out. I'm gonna open up this little guy here, guides, okay? And we have alignment guides, which is nice. Um, and that'll allow us to, when you have an object on a layer and you wanna align it to the canvas or to another object, alignment guides will come into play. But check this out, grids. I'm gonna just snap that on for a moment and lo and behold, perspective. Now, before we talk about perspective, remember we do have graph grids, okay? Graph grids, you can change the opacity of the grid, you can change the spacing of the grid, be whatever you like. 
All right, so that's very handy as well. But today we're all about that juicy perspective grid. So let's throw that in there. Now what you're seeing here is the perspective grid that I used for this particular drawing. Of course, it's gonna stick with the drawing as you would expect. Um, and let's take a look at some of the options we have here. Now, if you just hold on a minute, I'm gonna turn on my touch. Uh, here we go, input, touch. I wanna show the touches on the screen um, so that you all can, can see what I'm doing here. All right, that's one of the things when I'm drawing on an iPad, you can't see what I'm doing unless I make sure that these are visible. Um, okay, so perspective. Now you can see what I'm doing. There you go. Density of the grid. All right, let's start there. Well, that does what you'd expect, okay? You can make a very, very open kind of a grid or a really closed kind of a grid with a lot of lines. Depends on your preference. Opacity of the grid. You can see that, of course. I like to keep mine pretty light, pretty faint. Throw it down there around 20 or so. Um, but let's take a look at this. Vanishing points. And yes, in Fresco, we heard you loud and clear. We've got one point, two point, and yes, three point perspective. Because sometimes you just want to do those crazy views, those bird's eye views, or those ant's eye views, or whatever it is. Maybe you're drawing Spider-Man, he's hopping from building to building, you're looking from the camera down, you want to see those buildings disappearing down into the uh, distance, you know, or maybe you're looking up at the Burj Al Arab in Dubai. I don't know what you draw, what you want to draw. Um, so there you go. Um, I want to show you how to set this up. So we're looking at a finished drawing right now. Okay, but we're going to jump out for just a moment and we're going to head on over to a new document. We're going to go home here and let's create a current screen size document. And we'll open up that same panel right here. Okay, we're going to turn on our grids. There's perspective. Now let's say I want to start simple. I want to go with a one point perspective grid. So I tap on vanishing points, go to one point, all right? There it is. And you say, wait a second, I can't move it around. All right, I just start drawing. That's not what I want right now. Well, don't worry. You can edit the vanishing points just underneath there. Okay, now once you get into this mode, okay, I'm using my finger right now, but you could do this with the pencil. I'm just sliding it around to wherever I want that one point perspective vanishing point to live on my canvas. Of course, it could live off the canvas, right? We need that sometimes, but I'm just gonna set it like right here for now. You can zoom out really small so you can you can get your vanishing points, you know, anywhere you like, especially handy for a three point perspective as those artists out there who use that frequently know what I'm talking about, right? Say done, okay, got it set up, there it is. Now, by default, okay, I can just draw freely on the canvas like so, nothing happens. What I like about the way we designed this in Fresco is that with just one tap here, where it says snap grid axis for drawing, okay, I can very quickly get in and out of drawing with assisted mode, okay? So if I just draw in here, I've got it on uh, snap grid axis for drawing right here. See me tapping that, make sure that's on. And right off the bat, I can start drawing my one point perspective box, okay? Now, while I was drawing, you might have noticed something really delightful. What is that? I'll check it out. I'm gonna draw another box up here. I'll just draw a square first, okay? Do you see the extra lines there? They are sort of pinkish red color and they move with my uh, stylus, okay? While I'm drawing. And what's beautiful about these is that they do not have me doing, they, they take away, they eliminate 100% of the guesswork when you are drawing. Um, what I mean by that is with perspective drawing, okay, you definitely don't want to be thinking, hey, I want to line something up with something else, but I don't know exactly how to do that without a ruler or whatever. So watch this. I'm going to start drawing and make this box about this deep. Now, if I were to continue with this line here, right? Hang on a minute. I'm going to make that a little finer. I'm drawing this line. And as I draw, do you see I can use that horizontal pink line to tell me exactly where I need to stop so I can line it up perfectly, perfectly. This is such a fantastic feature. I use it to death as all of you should. Look, I'm using the vertical one now. I stop right there. I go, bam, I know exactly where I need to stop. So that really helps me orient myself in the drawing. Look right here for the face of the box. You know, I'm going to nail that. No problemo. Okay. Isn't that great? I love that feature. 
I love that. Takes all the guesswork out. So there's our simple one point perspective. You know, now I wanna do some shading underneath these two boxes that are above our horizon line. So I just tap off of the drawing, snap, and right here I'm just back to freehand drawing mode. No worries, right? Add some shading right there with the pencil. Tone that all in. And maybe I want to draw another box. I just go right back to drawing mode and I'm in good shape. Okay, everything's gonna snap to those lovely perspective guidelines. Okay, so there you go. Behaves exactly as you would expect. Why don't we jump over to a little two-point action, okay? So I'm gonna clear away everything on this layer and let's try a two-point perspective grid. I'll zoom out here and we'll go to edit our vanishing points. Now, you can see here that I've got the blue right set of uh, set of um, lines that are moving to the left vanishing point. Then I've got this sort of orange set of lines that are moving to the right vanishing point. Now you say, Kyle, I do a lot of comics work and I like things to be dynamic and I don't always draw everything with a horizon line that is perfectly horizontal, don't worry. Of course you can tilt it. Of course you can, of course you can. Why would we not let make that possible? I'll move this one pretty far away. I'll bring this one closer, okay? And there we go. Done. Jump over here. And then I start, you know, constructing my uh, perspective drawing. And of course, you see I'm just moving really quickly here, just sketching right now, but, oh, it's so satisfying to be able to do this, especially like lines that you have to do this, right? One after another, after another, all heading in the same direction. What a relief to be able to do this quickly. Fantastic. All right, clear that away. Three point, well, that's just what you'd expect. Go ahead and add that third point. Edit our vanishing points and look at that. Throw it up to the top if you want. We're looking up at a building, right? Bring our horizon line down. Draw crazy. Skyscraper moving up and away from us into the distance, right? I mentioned the Burj Al Arab earlier in the show. My brother just moved to Dubai with his family. Crazy, crazy. Having a great time, got a great job out there. We'd love to visit him, but you know, COVID makes that kind of hard, unfortunately. So it goes, but uh, excited for him. That's a pretty cool place to be. Uh, go ahead and turn off your grid if you want to get a look at your drawing and see how things are working out, okay? Um, checking out the comments. People like what they're seeing. That's great. If you have any questions, let me know, please. Go ahead and throw those in the chat. I'm looking at the chat. Remember at behance.net slash live be.net slash live and um yeah it's it's everything uh you want you know you want to be able to draw a perspective you don't want to spend a billion years doing it well um here you go just knock it in okie dokie so we kept things really simple really straightforward easy to use there's not much else in the way of having to set, do any settings or anything like that you set up your grid and you then start drawing as simple as that. When you don't want to be using that snap feature where you're snapping to the grid, simply turn it off right here where it says snap to grid axis for drawing, right? So here, if I want to draw uh, King Kong and he's scaling the, uh, the building or okay, then 
no big deal, I can just draw him there. There he is. All right, Angry Kong, Angry Kong. I didn't see that new movie. Did anybody see that? Was it any good? I thought I was worried it would be kind of lame, but uh, who knows. All right, so any questions about that? Yeah, Anna, you're so right. This would have made perspective class a cinch. I would have been cheating for sure. Um, I had to take a mechanical drawing class in high school, if you can believe it, um, back when that was still a thing you could do. Most high schools have eliminated that option, as far as I know. Got to use a big drafting table with all those lovely old tools like French curves, and um, we got to do lettering with those fantastic little devices. I've now forgotten the name of them. Oh gosh, but they keep your, uh, you, you set up your line work, uh, your guides for your lettering so everything's the same spacing and um, so fun to have that little collection of mechanical drawing tools. I loved it. I don't think they really offer that very much in high schools anymore or maybe even in universities. It's not really needed. All right, let's clear that away. And um, I'm going to also clear away my, uh, my grid for the moment because I want to talk next about motion. Motion. Um, you can use different brushes for the lines. Kelly, I'm so glad you asked that. Of course you can, of course you can. Turn it back on, ba bow. All right, here is our perspective grid. Let's go ahead and grab uh, something else. Maybe a painting category, right? How about the old canvas brush? Oh, turn on, there we go. Now it's got that ready to go. So easy. All working out. In fact, Grab ourselves a little watercolor brush here. Watercolor in perspective. It's crazy. Grab another color. And look at that. See that? Oh boy. Can't do that anywhere else, anywhere else folks. No. That's only a fresco thing right there. Can't do that anywhere else. Insane. Reduce the opacity of it. You can really see those colors blending together. Isn't that fun? Watch that paint move. Woo. Woo. Never gets old. Go right through it. Let's grab a nice deep dark blue color there. Go through that. Look at that. Crank up that water. Isn't that crazy? Do some pretty amazing things. Dave says, what's up, Kyle? Let's see that motion. Don't worry, I'll get to it. Dave, don't you worry, my friend. Yeah, I will get to it now. Um, Stephen Booth says, I was today years old when I dis discovered three-point perspective existed. <laughs> we see the world in three-point perspective. It's just that we don't really notice so much because we're usually looking straight out ahead towards the horizon line, more or less, something like that. I mean, if you're looking down at something, you're not usually looking so far that you would notice that three-point perspective so much, but it's there, everything you look at all day long. All right, I need to stop. This is fun, but I got to stop. We're going to talk about motion. Okay, so why don't we hide these for in just a moment. And I got my watercolor brush here, so I may as well kick it off with the watercolor brush. Uh, down here, you'll notice I have the little ruler. Okay, and if you hold that down, you have your drawing aids, right? Don't forget about these folks. They've been in there, but a lot of folks not taking advantage of our drawing aids. What are they, you may ask? Well, drawing aids allow me to Draw with assistance. 
right? See that? So that's fun. And it sure saves a lot of time. And of course you can transform them like that and you can come around and do that. Isn't that great? So we have uh, multiple drawing aids. We've got square, we've got a polygon, right? You want to add some sides to it. Grab your old, old pencil again, if you like, or maybe a little inking brush, like the Blake pen. Try a different color and just, whoops, there we go. You don't have to draw the whole shape. You can just draw part of it if you want, you know, like that. Draw another one. So you can find lots of ways to make this useful. Okay, so that is your extra drawing aids there with the basic shapes and everything. But right above that, right above that, I want you to notice we have motion. So let me clear this away. And here, if I tap on this, it pulls up at the bottom of the screen these options for motion. Um, Kelly says she just used the circle drawing aid today. Cool. Uh, Khaled says, hey, I just joined in. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, man, Khaled, you missed. You missed the first part of the show, but don't worry. It'll be on replay, so not to worry. We talked about perspective drawing. Um, but now we're talking about motion. Uh, Laura says, I guess that's an up upcoming feature. No, 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 no. The drawing aids have been in there all the last few months. They're great. All right, so back to motion. Um, this little guy here, I tap it on, okay? That's gonna turn on my little timeline at the bottom. You see we have one frame right there. And we have some options down at the bottom and we're not gonna get to those just yet because first I have to start drawing something, okay? Now one of the coolest things about motion in Fresco is that the frames that you draw are tied specifically to a layer, okay? Not to the overall document. And so, let's grab our watercolor brush here, and uh, we're just going to do this. One, two, draw a little circle there. So, I'm going to click on this little plus sign at the bottom that adds a new frame. Okay, and you can see here I've got frame one and then frame two. Or you can tap on it, you can slide it over, whatever you want to do. Um, now, I can't see frame one, but I'd like to be able to see it, right? because it'll help me to draw my next frame. And that's where settings come in. We're gonna turn on onion skinning right here. Turn that on, change the opacity there, okay? Um, and you can choose how many frames you want to go forward and backward from the frame that you're drawing with your onion skin. Uh, for now, I'm gonna set it just on two. Um, We'll get to the other options in a moment, but for now, I just wanna make sure that we have it turned on. So in my second frame, I can just paint another little circle right here, add a frame, paint another little circle right here, add a frame, add a frame. Make my brush a little smaller. And we can check it out by sitting play all, and then we can see how we're doing with our animation. Okay, pause. Uh, we'll go back here to the beginning. So you see I got one frame, two frame, three frame. You can see that all happening. So easy, so fun. Um, and check this out. I come back to this frame and I go, yeah, now I wanna do something else. I wanna add some blue to this. So just go ahead and do it. Just do that. Using the watercolor, watching it spread. And I wanna do that on this one too. And this one. Now I can look, watch it again. So that's cool, I like that better. Pause. Oh, you wanna do some motion on a different layer. Okay. Just go ahead and add a layer. 
And this time I'll add some yellow and I'll make the brush a little bigger. And I'm just gonna set like a square right there. Okay, and I'll say add another layer. And I want the square to go in this direction. Add another layer, add another layer. See, so intuitive, so simple, so simple. And one more. Okay, and I'll erase away a little bit of that so it's a little smaller. Okay, let's see what that does. See that? These separate animations are tied to separate layers. It's just so convenient. It's so convenient because I can do all kinds of different things on different layers and have them all play nicely together in one single animation. Um, you see that? I can just see everything happening together. And the cool thing is that the onion skin is not going to show me anything that's on the other layer right now, so I don't get distracted by a bunch of other stuff. I'm going to turn on the document timeline. Increase my onion skins. And you'll see here at the top now, see this? I've got this other timeline which is showing me, hey, this is how many frames you have in the total document seven all right so this is a helpful thing now if i if i were to for example on uh, this guy right here if i were to say i'm going to delete this frame okay well look i know i have an extra frame right there okay so it's telling me hey kyle you drew so far in this on this document you have seven frames of animation okay so if you leave this one blank what we're going to do is we're going to pop you back to the beginning. All right. So maybe I want something to just repeat on loop with only three frames. So, or four frames, let's say. So I'm going to go here and delete this frame and go here and delete this frame. Okay. Now what this means is when I play, they're on different timelines. See that? So I'm going to come back here and just to see that a little more clearly, I want you all to see something. I'm going to turn on settings here. We're going to change our frames per second. We're going to knock that down to just eight frames per second. So it plays a little more slowly and should be easier for you to follow what's happening. So the red ball takes up seven frames of animation and then loops. The yellow square takes up only four. So it's on a different timeline altogether. So this way you can create loops for different animations. And normally what you would do is you have, you know, things on even numbers, right? So if I want to create something that's going to loop every eight frames, I can put it on one layer and I can create those animations or several layers. And then I want something to happen twice as frequently as that. I could just have it loop on four frames. And then that is going to just naturally happen because the mode is set to loop that animation. So this is a time saver as well for a lot of folks. And um, this played really well with our beta testers. They liked this idea. And so we kept it. And I think it's pretty nifty. Um, can you set your frame lengths? Wade says, that's nice. Can you set your frame lengths? Uh, Wade, I'm glad you asked that question. Um, this is a very common request, of course, to be able to have a frame last you know, for several beats. And uh, the answer is you cannot do it yet, but this is version 1.0 of this feature. And in the next six months, we are going to be just regularly, as you know, Fresco is on a four to six week release schedule coming up here in the new year. Um, we're going to be releasing these little additional features to motion and to perspective and things like that that people want as we build them out and they get more and more robust. So absolutely, that one's at the top of the list because it is, of course, a very popular request. We hear you loud and clear. Um, Kelly says, nice that you don't have to keep them with an even number of frames for both. No, you don't. You don't have to do anything. You just do what you want. Uh, so. There you go. Um, by the way, I do want to point out, Wade, of course it's not perfect, but the solution we have for now for people is to simply duplicate frames for however many beats they want. 
um, and that's that's the way we would work it right now rather than simply setting a length okay so that's a workaround for you um, all righty any other questions before I move on to some other nifty things so hopefully this is making sense you're seeing how this is playing out with motion tied to individual layers okay um, let's see what else here. Hope there are some tu tutorials in YouTube for that. Are you talking, Laura, about the motion? Or I assume you're talking about motion. So yes, there will be, of course. Um, okay, okay, okay. When will we be able to use this, says Dave. It's coming out in um, the end of October, Dave, for Adobe Max, the Adobe Max release of Fresco. Um, actually, the release should be, I think, the day of Max exactly on that day, um, which is October. Uh, I need to look that up. I'm so sorry. You can look it up, just uh, Adobe Max. Check it out, and um, you will find it. And make sure you register because it's free and it's incredible. Can you do rotoscoping by importing video, says Peter. Well, you'd have to export the video to frames and then import those as layers. So what you would do is, um, because Photoshop creates cloud PSDs, these are automatically Photoshop files. If you were to open Photoshop and have those layers ready to go for rotoscoping, you would just save that PSD in your cloud docs um, because our, our Creative Cloud uh, PSDs, whenever they're saved, they automatically are available in every other app that can read those files. Um, if you go back here to my home screen, you'll notice that uh, if I go to your files, for example, um, this file, for example, where it says Deco, uh, this was a file that was created in Photoshop um, when I was doing a demo last week for my illustration masterclass on Art Deco posters, and I saved it, you know, Automatically, it was being saved in the background while I was working on it. Um, and then when I open Fresco, it's available to me right here. All my layers are intact. Everything's ready to go. So yes, the answer is you could do that. You could do rotoscope animation. Um, you would simply make sure that you had imported all the, or exported the video to, um, to layers for the frames, whatever frame rate you want and then save that PSD. You can open it up then in Fresco. And uh, if you don't use Cloud Docs, you can import that, that uh, Photoshop document into Fresco. If you come over here in your homepage, you see at the bottom I have Import and Open. There it says Photoshop Files. So you could do it that way too, okay? Hope that answers your question. Um, Any other questions? Let's see here. Can you export the animation as MP4 and as a GIF file? So here we have our publishing and exporting options. So you just, at the bottom, you notice we have motion. So here you have MP4, GIF, and PNG set. A PNG is going to export the frames as uh, PNGs. So yes, all the good things and um, it's great. Okay, any other questions? And uh, great, 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 great. Will there be Flash or After Effects for iPad soon? That's a good question, Biakleon. I don't know the answer to that. Um, I cannot answer that. Sorry, I don't know, but it is a good question. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so back to our animation here. Uh, we'll turn our, our document timeline again as we did. All right, now I want to get to <clears throat> something pretty exciting here. But before I do, I um, just want to, again, reiterate that every frame, okay, that is tied to a layer is instantly editable. Fantastic. You want to come in here, you want to edit this with the eraser, you just do that. Okay. It's automatically updated. I don't have to do anything else. I come in here, edit that one. 
come in here, edit that one. Let's go back to the beginning, and now we're like doing a thing where it's basically rotating, you know, its shape. We'll play that again. See? So, there you go. Um, and the undo stack is going to remember, by the way, the, the actions you took per frame as well. So you're not going to lose anything if you go with undo after that. Uh, the other thing, uh, was, what was I going to point out, was... Um, sort of lost my train of thought there when I got busy erasing. So uh, editable from from there. Uh, of course, you can do things like duplicate a layer if you need to. Um, but I want to get into this interesting stuff because I said at the beginning of the show that we're not just talking about animation. I said the word motion in Fresco um, because in addition to frame by frame animation, which you're seeing here. Um, with the settings you'd expect. You've got your onion skinning, which we covered, um, and you have uh, your frames per second, so you've got the speed that you can control and all that. One thing we didn't touch on is the playback mode. So you have boomerang, and we have play once through. So these are very common animation uh, needs that people have, especially if you're creating little quick uh, animated GIFs or something, or a little short animation you want to put on Instagram or wherever. So if I were to put it on boomerang, you'll see the difference. So just play it, it's going to go back and forth. And again, as you can see, each of these timelines is independent of one another, and it's tied to a specific layer, right? So you can have all kinds of different things happening here. Um, and I think just to really drive this point home, it's fun to have a third element on a completely different, uh, whoops, I did a vector one, there we go. A third element on a completely different schedule if you like so we'll have this one do um, ten frames okay or eleven frames since it takes no time at all, I'll just do even more. I'll do like 12. Okay, 13, whatever. Now when you play all these, see they have their own, their own little um, timeline, independent of the others. So again, this is really gonna open up the door to some pretty nifty stuff for everybody out there who likes animation and motion. A uh, quick check here for questions. Da, 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 da. Okay, great. Um, all right, so let's pause that. Okay, um, gonna hide this stuff for a moment. I'm gonna hide these layers because we're gonna create a new layer. There we go. Create a new layer, and I want to show you something else you can do and this is where we get into the motion part of the deal okay so I'm gonna draw another little circle here I'll make this one like hollow in the middle just to make it different okay now what do I want to do with this uh, first thing I want to do is I want to add a little color and make it different there we go just for just for fun be kind of pretty. It's always fun to throw the watercolors on top of each other. I'm going to tap on at the bottom of the, my um, screen here. You see I have three options. Play all path and settings. I'm going to tap on path. And once I tap on path, check this out. Whoa, what just happened everybody? What just happened? Path animation in Fresco. This is gonna just make everything better. It's gonna make everything better. Yes, you can draw paths on your layers and the paths themselves are also tied to the layers. And uh, holy cow, you can do amazing stuff. So check this out. Not only can I draw that path, but I could do another one right here still on the same layer. It's still going to remember it. It's still tied 
to the same info. Okay. Um, and then check this out. Yes, I'm dealing with paths, but wait a minute. Check this out. I'm going to just say, hey, I want to come over here. I'm going to just get rid of my settings here for a minute. Pause my animation. I'm going to add a frame. Okay. And I was working on this. This is my original asset, right? Maybe I want to do something like this. I'm going to... Actually, I'll change, I'll go back to my original color so it doesn't look too crazy. But I'm just gonna stretch it. There we go. Stretch it a little bit. Okay, like this. Add that yellow. And let's add another frame. And I'm gonna stretch it a little more. Okay like that. Alrighty, now I just added um, frames to my animation, but I do still have a path. So look what happens. They're gonna follow along that path while that frame by frame animation plays out, okay? And currently it's set to Boomerang. So that animation, those three frames are going to go one, two, three, two, one, two, three, two, one, two, three, two, one. And that's what we're seeing here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now if I come back to path and just draw another one right here, well, there you go. It's going to move up and down the path in a boomerang fashion. Okay. So not just the animation is boomeranging, but the, the motion along the path or the paths, plural, is going to um, move as well. And, you know, we can come over to our settings and we can say, all right, I'd like that to be a little faster, please. So we're going to go to our frames per second and bump that up to 22 frames per second. Okay. Like so. So now the animation itself is faster, but you say, wait a minute, I want the actual movement along the path to be faster. How do you do that? Ah, uh, well, you will notice here that we have over on the right, my layer properties. Now layer properties for a motion layer give you these options for path effects. And you'll see that one of those options, if you go about halfway down the screen says uh, velocity, uniform speed, easy to navigate okay, velocity right here. I'm gonna increase the velocity and then hit play again. Now they're gonna move faster, okay? And I'm going to then increase it even more. Play. See that? And let's change our settings. Instead of boomerang, we'll just do loop. So while you're playing your animation, you can see in real time how it's changing while you go. Okay. Pretty nifty. And I'll go ahead and turn off onion skidding for now. And we'll go and do some other cool things. Let's see what we can do here. So you have this option to add multiples along a path. This means I drew one circle. Okay, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna for just a moment here, I'm gonna close these other ones just to keep it simple. So here's my motion path and here's my object. We see this sort of donut, this blue and yellow donut, right? I know it's gonna move along the path. But when I add multiples, let's do two of them, okay? And then hit play, what happens? Look at that. Now I have several of them moving along that path at the same time, okay? Let's do four of them. And there you go. Just keeps popping them out one after another and they move along that path. So you want to do multiples of a single idea and you want to keep it moving? There you go. Isn't this crazy? Pause that for a moment. You want to scatter? You can do this. What does that mean? What am I doing by scattering? So they're going to follow the path, but just like brushes scatter, when you assign brush scatter and you set a certain number of pixels, 
you are moving the asset, okay, off of the path vertically, either upwards or downwards, okay, if the path is horizontal. If it's vertical, you're moving it either to the left or to the right. And so it's still going to follow that path in general, but it's going to get bumpy. Now, to make that more clear, I will draw a path down here that is mostly straight. And you should be able to see what happens. And I'll close this original path here. Now, you can see that they are still moving from left to right but they are not moving in a perfectly straight line because of that scatter setting. So this could be useful for all, or, all, kinds, of, uh, all kinds of organic motion that you want to create, um, something that you're drawing that is uh, going to replicate something in the natural world or what have you. Uh, really, really useful. So you can just imagine how that would speed things up for you, okay? Just checking to see if we have any questions here. Oh my gosh, this is so fun, says Umicorn. I agree with you. These motion features will definitely be a game changer. Absolutely, the Aquan. Robert, thanks for joining us, nice to see you. Yeah, dandelion seeds. I mean, there's so many things, you know. I saw the suggestion for a bee in a garden. Exactly, that's exactly what you want. Can you turn the path animation into frames? You certainly can, Wade, you certainly can. So, settings, show paths as frames. And now you can see the frames. Let me set it down to one so it's a lot easier to look at, okay? It's telling me that there are 26 total frames for that animation where it's moving across from the very beginning of the path to the end. Um, converting them to frames, I know that's on the list. I thought we had that done. Let me just double check if we did. Yeah, here you go, convert to frames. So I can do that. And I'll hide this layer for a moment and we'll come over here. And here you have Oh, it looks like it looks like this isn't currently working, but I know it will work, don't worry. Um, just so you all know, I'm using an internal build that is still in progress. Um, but you saw that in fact, we did have the option here to convert to frames, so not to worry, that's gonna work. And it's very useful as you can imagine. All right, any other question? Any animation curves here? Sorry, Michael, I don't know what you mean by animation curves. Thank you, Bliss, we're trying. Yeah, ease in and ease out is also available, as you can see. Um, down the road, we're of course gonna have options to ease in by itself or ease out by itself. So you can attack something or have something stop more abruptly at the end of the action, um, rather than simply have it at both ends. But to start off, uh, we are using ease in and ease out. Um, as a way to, to make things work. And just for those of you who are not familiar with what that means in animation, I will show you very quickly. Um, so let's just do... We have this shape right here, and I'm going to draw a path, and we're gonna make it go up and land right here. Okay, now, you'll see that it's actually currently moving at a speed where, I'll move it a little faster, there we go. 
is moving at a uniform speed all the way through. If I turn on ease in and ease out, it's going to speed up at the beginning. Uh, sorry, slow, slow to, to fast to slow. Okay, so the easing means you are slowing things down. Okay, and this is really helpful. Um, and like I said, we will be adding this ability to ease in without easing out, uh, since that is an essential part of doing, uh, especially frame by frame animation. But since we're adding motion here, we should, of course, have that for you. Um, by the way, we didn't look at this, but at the bottom you have this option to randomize um, uh, the alignment to the path. And when I say alignment to the path, what I mean is this. Let me just quickly get rid of this. And I'll draw another path for you, and I want you to see what this does. So let's imagine that I want this line to actually rotate along a path. I'll do this. I'll draw a circle. Okay, now it's going to keep its orientation, but if I say align to path, see that? It's going to rotate with the path. Make sense? And you can randomize that. So it's going to rotate not necessarily in the same spot. Okay, this is similar to how we can use scatter. I can throw it all off and I can do these cool random actions and then add a bunch of multiples. So fun. You can just imagine how you could use this and in combination with frame by frame animation, right? I could turn these back on. And you've got your frame by frame animation, you've got your path based animation, your motion. Um, there are just so many cool things that you could do uh, all together to make this work. All right, any other questions? Let's see. Michael's talking about curves that are used in After Effects. No, not here, and I, can, I need to look into that and see what that is. Um, Sean says it's the ability to edit the ease in and ease out to change the spacing over time. Oh, that kind of curve. I'm sorry. Like a curve that you would use for um, for any adjustment where you can modify the points and do S curves and so on. Um, I don't foresee us having anything quite that complex in Fresco. Fresco is not meant to be a one-stop shop for like really advanced animation work, but it doesn't mean it's not possible. It's something It's something to bring up with the team. Um, can you import images and move them with a path? Peter, yes, you can, of course, yes, absolutely. Why are the O's so blinky compared to the red lines? Why are they so blinky? I don't know, something to do with what, how, whatever I did wrong when I animated them or when I converted them to paths or, I mean, to um, frames. I did something to confuse Fresco, I think. There you go. That's what it should look like. I had a, I had a certain layer hidden. Better now. <laughs> well, folks, um, that's a lot to cover. So let's jump back to that drawing I was doing. I want you to see um, perspective drawing with animation. So I'll go ahead and turn off that grid. Bye. And I'll bring back my, uh, my motion here. Where is it? Bump, bump. Car here in the. I, but my idea here was this car pulls up, and someone jumps out of the front of the car and walks into this uh, little awning under this awning here into a building. So drawing this was especially fun for me because I got to use the perspective grid um, to draw it, and I'll just show you here my my sketches for that so you can see how that looks. So here's my sketch. You know, I got to work on that with the perspective right there, which made it super easy for me to see what I was doing. Knock in that background on a separate layer, right? And then um, started doing this, uh, this final line work over it. 
So lining all this up and making it work was a cinch because of the perspective grid and also with this uh, handy dandy animation feature, the motion features we got here, easy for me to keep track of it all on one single layer. So I think you all are gonna love this. I can't wait for this to be live and that's coming up at Adobe Max. Um, and I know everyone's gonna create some amazing stuff with it. And like I said, it's gonna just keep getting better. This is just the beginning. Um, as you know, with Fresco, we're constantly putting out updates. We put out updates, like I said, about every four to six weeks, the app gets updated. Uh, incredible schedule there um, with new stuff coming all the time. So I just can't wait to see this stuff in your hands and see what you make with it. I know you're gonna do some amazing stuff, like I said. Um, I've been playing with it and having a great time. And I'm really proud to be part of a team uh, that makes this kind of stuff based on your input. So please do continue to reach out to us and ask for stuff so we can make it. All right, that's going to do it for me. Thanks for hanging out and have a great light box. And I'll see you all next week for my regular shows. Until then, take care of yourselves, take care of each other. Remember to be kind. And I will say ciao for now.